We're joined by our winning car owner, Joe Gibbs, and uh, winning crew chief, Adam Stevens. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get our wireless mic to you. We'll start over here with Jordan, and we'll work over way to Lee and Zay and Bob. We'll get you guys. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, this question's for Adam. You guys are 22nd after stage two. Um, frustrations are running high. Kind of take me through what you're thinking at that point, and did you envision like even a win was on the table? No, nah, I wasn't thinking win at that point. You know, we uh, were decent in the first stage. What did we finish? Eighth or ninth? Um, and we'd gone forward. We lost some lo little speed in our car, a little balance late on tires, and we tried to make a little bit bigger adjustment um, to to help our balance, and, and it was absolutely dead wrong. Um, it, it hurt it. It doubly hurt it on bo the both problems we were trying to fix. So we really paid the price the entire second stage and thankfully stayed on the lead lap somehow. Um, it was bad. So um, the pressure was on to get that adjustment out of there at the end of stage two. Um, and actually, we did most of it at, on the green flag stop. and. Uh, and got a little bit better and, and then uh, kind of closed the gap at the stage three break. And um, he had a great restart at the start of stage three and uh, passed 10 or 12 cars there pretty quick. And, and you could see that we woke the car back up. So um, still wasn't quite thinking win yet, but uh, man, the more you pile on his shoulders, that seems like the better he does. You, you have experience dealing with drivers who can get animated on the radio. <laughs> um, when you hear Christopher kind of like that, it just, it, what, what's your reaction to that? Do you just kind of let it go, or do you, do you just, how do you handle that? I felt like home. Uh, no. It, it, you know, sometimes he lets uh, a little bit of emotion come out, and sometimes you need to. Uh, you know, I scream my full head off on the box sometimes and don't key the mic. Um, you got to let it out, you know. And uh, he was in a, a bad spot. We put him in a bad spot, and he was – driving his pants off and um, I was just trying to give him information of where the leader was to so he didn't lose sight of it um, I didn't want him to be on our bumper and him be surprised by it so um, yeah you sometimes you got to tell them things they don't want to hear and sometimes they're going to tell you things that maybe you don't want to hear part of it and the last question is for Joe Joe Martin today another you know disappointing result and the frustration seems to be at least building at least from the outside what what your reaction to that and kind of what you say to the team no, I think it shows you how hard our sport is. We had a, such a disappointment with the 11. Then he cut a tire down. I felt like he was fast. Martin qualified on a pole. I thought we had a chance, you know, with that car. But it just a series of circumstances and then lose the, lose the motor. It shows you how hard <laughs> our sport is because those were the two cars that for a while for us were up front. And it also shows you that in sports, and particularly in our sport, the 20 was an example of just never giving up and just keep fighting because, I mean, it went all the way to the second stage where, you know, you don't really think that car is going to make much of a, uh, a dent in things today. And when we're going to Phoenix with the second year in a row with Christopher, it's exciting for us. He's a young guy. And to see this promise and the way he and Adam work together, I think also going to Phoenix will be emotional for us. I think of Coy and everything last year, and also JD in there. Those two guys spent their entire lives building our race team. And so, anyway, thrill for us to get a chance to do this. And we just had real disappointments with two of our cars, but the good news is they, they both are good at Martinsville. Okay, we'll go over here to Lee. Lee Spencer, CatchFriends.com. Adam, knowing what Bell did last year and then to win when he absolutely had to today, what does that say of the strength of the 20 team and, and the caliber of your driver? Yeah, you know, uh, Bell's a generational talent in this sport you know he is as good as they come he's still learning um, we're still learning each other as a team and if you get him close he can get the job done we've proven it time and time again um, we got to do a better job as a team and as a company keeping him in contention uh, and when we do that he's able to claw his way up there and make stuff happen like the great ones do and coach you kind of touched on this but 
I know from the minute that you have gotten into NASCAR, you said the hardest thing for you to get used to, there's only one winner no. and 39 losers or, you know, whatever the car count is every week, right? Um, but when it's your own team and you see, you know, the highs of, of Bell and then Denny and Martin, you know, being a coach, how do you pump those guys up going into this, the penultimate race of the season? Yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with character, the people that you have in those positions. So I think both Denny and uh, Martin have, that's why we're so fortunate. Those two guys are veteran guys. And in our competition meetings, they're talking and I think Ty and Christopher are listening to a lot of it and it's really helped us. But I think it goes back to character and selecting people on your team today, Adam and Christopher, they don't give up. And I know Denny and Martin won't either. It's just amazing sometimes what can happen in a sport to have the 19 do what it did in regular season. You don't luck out on that. That was 26 weeks and won it by a bunch. And so it shows you what can happen in, in sports. It's the greatest reality show in the world because we don't know. And I think that as fans, that's why we all like it. We don't know. And so uh, just thrilled to be a part of it. God's blessed us with a lot of great people, really. Go ahead, Bob, and then uh, Jeff. Bob Packers, Fox Sports. Uh, Coach, so do you look at today as a good day because you won, or do you look at it with extremely mixed feelings because of the 11 and 17? And then if the 11 and 17 don't make it, how would you evaluate the season if the 20 is the only, quote unquote, only car that you have in the championship? <laughs> I think it's hard to get in the final four. I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, I don't think anything's a given. And certainly the 19, all they did in regular season, like I mentioned, and as good as they are, but we've had real disappointments with, with everything that's happened. I think uh, the 11's been pretty consistent up until the last couple of weeks. And so, you know, I think you, you're looking at it as I think the great thing is we got three cars from our team that have a chance. And so we still got a chance. That's the way we look at it, you know. I think we're going to Martinsville. It's going to be, you know, a classic, I'm sure. But we do have a chance when we go there with both Denny and, and Martin. Okay, come over here to Jeff. Then we'll go to Zach, Dustin, and then in the back. Um, Coach, you know, Bell has now won three pretty – pressure-packed races here in, in the playoffs the last couple of years. I mean, two eliminations and one today, which, you know, with somebody chasing him down. Um, what, what kind of mentality does it take for athletes to perform at sort of a different level and not let the outside noise creep in and affect them in, in those kind of situations? I think that's what we all look at and say, how many guys want to drive cars? How many guys are racing late models? How many get a chance to come up here? And then it winds up being only a small number can really, really get it done when they have to get it done. And it's so hard sometimes, like Christopher, it's only his fourth year, you know. He got thrown in the first year, and we had no practice because of COVID, and we were just throwing him into racetracks, and, you know, he was able to, he and Adam, to work through all that. Then he comes back the second year, and then he kind of gets his feet on the ground and takes off. The great thing there, is how young he is. And I, I think Adam said it, you know, I think Adam's done a great job of bringing him along. And uh, I think he's got great confidence in Adam, that certainly helps. And so I think it's, what it says is that something that could, I, I told him we put a saddle on Christopher and ride him for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go over here to Zach. Zach Sterniola, NASCAR.com. Adam, for you, um, the resiliency of this 20 team. Um, obviously, a, a stinging loss last week, uh, being as close as you guys were. And then you lose the, the lead on pit road late today, have to retake it all after getting the balance right on, on the car late. What does it say about the resilience of, re resiliency of Christopher, of this 20 team as a whole, and um, what lessons 
have been learned along the way to get to this point? Yeah, I, I think it's important that, uh, you know, last week stung, but by the time the plane landed, we were over it and focused on the next thing. You know, um, we still had a great day, uh, had a great weekend there. You know, we just couldn't keep the lead on that last stop and, and couldn't get out of the box and spin on our tires. And <clears throat> you have to do all those things um, when it comes down to it. And, you know, we didn't, it, we uh, were, you know, miffed that the opportunity got away, but we weren't miffed at our part in it. You know, that just happens in professional sports. And then it was a matter of digging in and then on to the next one. And, you know, I, I tell the guys all the time that, you know, you can't look backwards. You, you can't dwell on it. And you have to really do your best to pull the good stuff out of the weekend and leave the bad stuff. You know, even on your most dismal weekend, there's something that you learned or something that was good or done well that you can remind the guys of, remind yourself of, and, and build off of. And, um, you know, that's something that we all need to, to remind ourselves and, and stay focused on. But it's critically important because if your only goal is the goal is always to win, but if that's the only way that you appease yourself, um, you're going to be miserable, and it's going to pile up, and you're going to make bad decisions. So, um, you know, you have to pull those good things out of those weekends, and I think uh, we did a good job of that. And, um, you know, the, the pit stops, um, <clears throat> we didn't want to lose the lead, uh, but, you know, it, it wasn't the cleanest stop, but we only lost two, and we had good short run speed, and Bell manned up and got it done. That, um, you have to have days like that, and, I, and I'm proud that we had one today. Okay, we'll come here to Dustin, and then we'll take the last question in the back. Dustin Long, NBC Sports, I have questions for both of you, but for you, Adam, um, can you give me a sense of perspective of, of another time where you guys were seemingly so far off in a race and able to come back and win? I, the one thing that comes to mind immediately since we're here at Homestead is 2019, because I think going into the, the race, I think everybody kind of figured you guys were the fourth of the four, but hey, you came out the champion. Can you give me a sense of perspective of how what today compares and yeah, how I mean, you... 2019, I didn't really feel that. Maybe in practice, but when the race was going, I, I felt like we were close, um, and we were, uh, and we were up there all day, really. So the one that comes to mind for me is Chicago. I want to say it was 2018. Uh, it was the Dale Jr. Slide Job race with the uh, with the five, I think. Um, we ran ar around mid-pack tail end of the lead lap most of the day and clawed our way up to like 10th or 11th and um, I think there were only maybe 14 on the lead lap roughly at the time and I, I told him I got no interest in running 10th or 11th you know we're going to call a timeout on here and and make some changes and we pulled packer and added packer and adjusted shocks and double wedge and track bar and everything and he just started passing cars um, and, and drove it up there to the front and won that race. And that was a little bit like today where there was, I mean, middle of the race, we were out of it and then clawed our way back forward. And Joe, um, obviously you've got one car at Phoenix. Uh, you know, you still could obviously have two realistically if you have another, it might only be just one. Um, and understanding that what happens on the track can't compare with what you and your family went through last year. Right. Are you even, I don't know, say looking forward to Phoenix or how do you approach the idea that Phoenix is coming up on the calendar with this different things? Yeah, I think um, that's, a, that's a good question. I would say that there's gonna be part of that. We'll be remembering things that happened and um, part of it was, hey, I think Heather said that's the happiest she's seen Coy that night, everything that happened on the racetrack. So anyway, I, and I think obviously a big part of it will be us focused on if the 20 cars there and if we are fortunate enough to get somebody else. I always talk to our team and everything about the fact that we've been 31 years and we only have five championships on the back wall. And we're, that's how hard it is. And this sport is really, really hard because there's so much to it. And if you got a weak part of your race team, the playoffs will find it. And so, uh, yeah, I think there'll, there'll be some memories there for sure. Okay, we'll wrap with one last question in the back back here. 
Brenton with uh, FrenchRush.com. This can be for either one of you guys. Um, you know, it was touched on how Christopher Bell has come up in the past uh, two seasons uh, to get into the championship and everything. You know, what is it? You know, you talked about his ability and everything, but what is it about this part of the year that um, he just can get it done in that in those scenarios, um, having having to win? And also, we hear a lot about the first buy from the winner at Las Vegas. Uh, how are you guys approaching Martinsville uh, with prepping the car for Phoenix? Are you guys not really throwing it out the window, but are you guys a little bit more relaxed heading to Martinsville now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. Um, you know, we had some setup stuff that we wanted to try there um, that we got pretty low confidence in. Um, now we have the ability to do that. Uh, so I think we'll probably do that and hope maybe we'll maybe we'll find something that can really help us for next year. But um, if we have the ability to get up there and race for the win, uh, we'll certainly not turn it away. Uh, but if it's not our day, it's not our day. And uh, we're not going to let that bother us. But we need to go have a good safe race, a good clean race on pit road and, and build a little momentum um, on that side of it uh, for Phoenix. Uh, but, you know, as far as what makes Christopher great in these pressure situations, um, he, he just loves it. He, you know, he, he loves trading paint and racing for the win. And the closer you can get him to the front, um, you know, the better he does. And that's just the, the makeup of a, a real racer and, and somebody who was born to do this. All right, gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you.